أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوية الأربعين نوية الاعتكاف نوية الخلوة نوية العزة نوية الرياضة نوية السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد oh, I think this, uh, this session will be the last in that Allah سبحانه وتعالى He didn't leave anything except always Allah wants us to be blessed in different ways, in ways that we know, in ways that we don't know. Allah wants His mercy to be dressing us. And as Prophet ﷺ, we mentioned before that Allah gave him from, from that drop of Prophet's light, Allah created for him creation. And what really we got to know, not us, but Allah, Sahaba, Prophets, and then us, and everyone on this universe, is a drop from that drop. That drop becomes an ocean, and what is being exposed is one drop of that ocean. And also, we explain that mm, somehow, not in full detail of what Grand Sheikh has told us and Morana Sheikh Nazim has told us, but whatever we can take, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam someone that Prophet feels happy with, feels easy with. Allah gave him his friend, his companion, the one that whatever Prophet Wasallam said, he said, Sadaqta Ya Rasulullah. Yes, Ya Rasulullah, you said the, the truth. He never has <coughs> doubt. That's not easy. Not easy to for someone not to have doubt in that time where there was so much ignorance and someone and Prophet Wasallam say I went for Isra and Mi'raj in a, in a blink of an eye going and coming and still my mattress is uh, warm in a jahiliyyah, in an ignorance, it's very difficult for people to believe. What Sayyidina Abu Bakr said? Sadaqta Ya Rasulullah. You said the truth, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Whatever you said, I'm accepting. Today we are in ignorance, isn't it? No. It's very difficult for people today to say yes to anything. Not? No. Very difficult. That's why there, there are, the people are blind. Whatever awliya Allah they say to them, awliya Allah are not prophet. They are, they are inheriting from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq what they need to face the sins of this world because you know, uh, awliya Allah are, are, they are able, they can eat, eat, you know, eat, how to eat, how to eat? Extract? When you eat, how you eat? You can put it in your one. And today they are fancy people, they sit around tables 
they teach them protocol. So when they have soup, they tell them you carry the spoon. Don't carry it from <coughs> bottom or like that. Or it has to be like that. And then... <laughs> You, they say, don't open your mouth too much, I think. And another time, and another time. In one hour to drink the soup. And there are some others who are more professional, higher level, we are going to waste one hour in drinking the soup. Take the soup. Awliya <laughs> Allah, <laughs> they are eater of sins. Allah. Only they swallow all sins of all human beings in one second. Allah gave them that power. Don't think Awliya Allah are easy. They are getting that power from prophets through Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq. Awliya Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these knowledges. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah made him to be friend to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why he used to say, yes, yes, why he says yes. You think when Prophet went to Isra and Mi'raj, he didn't take with him spirituality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq? Why not? He can, he can or he cannot? Huh? He can. He can. <clears throat> the guest can bring a guest. The one, the guest of honor, can bring many guests with him, is not? No. What do you think if Prophet ﷺ, when he was being invited to go to the divine presence, Kaaba Kausayni Abu Adna, cannot take with him all his Sahaba? Of course, he will bring them. That's why Muhaddin, not Muhaddin ibn Arabi, say Imam Ghazali said that everyone has a mi'raj. Every human being, Allah gave them a mi'raj, especially awliya Allah. They are inheritors of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have a mi'raj that they can go through the power of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are here blind, you don't see. But in reality, what Allah gave to you, you don't know. Especially to, to, to those who are connected to the chain through Awliya Allah to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq. He said, Prophet وسلم, is saying to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq, Oh my friend, oh the one that accepted me, said yes, Ya Rasulullah, in everything, Sadaqta Ya Rasulullah. The highest level of your Iman and the strength of your Iman and your Tawheed the declaration of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart, this is going to be transferred, transferred, transformation, transferred, or reflected to all your, those who follow you. Anyone who follow you, Ya Abu Bakr al Siddiq means following me. That's why he was the first Khalifa of first Khalifa of Prophet. That's why he was his friend in the in the cave. Said so anyone following you, they are going to get from you 
these knowledges and this power of faith and knowledge of realities according to their levels and according to their, their trainings. They are going to get from you, Ya Abu Bakr and Sadiq, whatever I gave you of secrets, it is going to be transferred to them through you, from you to them. All these secrets. Oh, Abu Bakr and Sadiq, anyone is a murid of your Sadiq Tariqah. That's why it was called in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sadiq, a Tariqah Sadiqiyah. Later was called Tariqah Naqshbandiyah. At the, at the beginning it was the Siddiqi uh, orders, Sufi orders, not necessarily Sufi. The, the, those who are following Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq, and they, they kept following him, uh, and uh, from him it passed to Sayyidina Salman, uh, Sayyidina Siddiq Salman, then Sayyidina Al Qasim, the grandson. Jafar, then Sayyidina Jafar al Sadiq, and all the way like that was going from one wali to another wali with all their followers till the day to reach Sayyidina al Mahdi alayhi salam, till day of judgment. Anyone, Ya Abu Bakr al Sadiq, is following what you are giving them, you have to know that they are the one chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have been chosen and granted. Granted, even without looking at what they are doing, Allah grant them. It's wahban. There is two kinds, wahban and kasban. Wahban is you get rewarded because there are two, wahban and kasban. Kasban is you get rewarded if you do, if you progress in what you are doing. You will be rewarded. Like someone works, he will be rewarded at the end of the month with a salary. Because you are working. You cannot get a salary without working, is not? If you get a salary without working, then we say it is a grant, wahban. So people are of two types, wahban and kasban. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in this reality of Grand Sheikh vision, what he is saying, he said that, all Tariqat people of the Naqshbandi Sufi order, they have been granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not looking at the, if they do or they don't do, they have been granted all these knowledges, all these secrets, because they accepted Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq, and they follow that chain of sainthood, and that's why we call it the golden chain, and it is very well known that the Naqshbandi Tariqah is the highest level of Sufi order. They are all of them, the Murids, are, are going to be in the same position and rank of their saint. That's why awliyaullah, they say, we want Irshad to raise our followers to our levels. They don't accept that their murids are lower than the level of the shiuch. And, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr will never accept the, the level of shiuch to be less than his level. He said, the beginning of the Naqshbandi Tariqah is the end of all other tariqats. Where all other tariqats end, with their shiuch, the, begin the beginners in the Naqshbandi is on the same level of where it ends in others. It's not simple. What you are doing? You are doing little bit zikrullah, you are doing a little bit, uh, uh, that's if you are doing, <laughs> is that? And, uh, but, as we said, it is wahban. Allah said, okay, this group, I'm granting them. Whatever they do, they do. It's my choice. This group, 
they have to progress and they have to run and they have to run in order to get their rewards. You are of the first group. All Naqshbandis are of the first group. Naqshbandis that they are following the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq and from the other side, because it, the uh, sainthood is coming from two sides, one from Sayyidina Ali, one from Sayyidina Abu Bakr, meeting at Sayyidina Jafar al Sadiq. You are coming from these two sides, you are being granted that level. He said that beginning of the Naqshbandi that being granted to them, it's higher and greater than all other saints. Wherever they reach with their murids, still they are lower than the Naqshbandi's saints. He said, how much? 40 tariqats, there is 41 tariqa. 40 tariqa are different from the Naqshbandi. Naqshbandi is the 41. In the 40 tariqa, how much the sheikhs give hard time to the student of working hard, progressing hard, doing seclusions, doing riyadah training, all that, and they spend all their life to make as much as they can to reach higher level, they will reach. But Naqshbandis, so easy, they are being granted that without trying to do hard work or hard zikr or hard progress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that one. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted prophets. He made this group prophets. Not everyone prophets. So you cannot say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why you make this prophets. Yeah? Is that? Allah made this group of people to be granted that kind of knowledge. You cannot say why. Allah gave them. They gave the Naqshbandi. They gave the Naqshbandi. Come to be Naqshbandi. It's okay. Yeah? Look, Sayyidina Yusuf, his brothers are what? They are prophets. Is not? How many? Twelve. Eleven. With Binyamin, eleven. Leave Binyamin away, ten of them, what they did? No, such that at the end. They wanted to kill him at the beginning. They are prophets. But Allah doesn't like what they, doesn't look at what they, they, they do or what they are doing. He made them prophets. He gave them that level. The, what they did, they finally they didn't kill him, they put him in the world. And they left. And they f went to their father Sayyidina Yaqub and they lied. They said, Akala Huzib, he was being eaten by the wolf. They come on his shirt with false blood. They killed some, a, a rabbit, might be. <laughs> and they put uh, blood on the shirt and they came to their father oh my father he he uh, his father Sayyidina Yaqub doesn't know no but he keep quiet because this is Allah his will and they are what they are prophets but they have been granted that level so no one can say what what is this you can say that no Allah يفعل ما يشاء Allah will do whatever he likes not what you like so you have to be very happy you have to be so amazed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of darkness he put you and granted you this light it's not huh? for free for free He's not looking what you are doing. You are not doing anything during the day or during the night. But Allah granted you. That's what Grand Sheikh is saying. If anyone has a question, go to Grand Sheikh and ask him.
So Prophet Sallallahu in that association of awliya and that vision, he, he Grand Sheikh is seeing through that vision that Prophet was saying to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq that Ya Abu Bakr, the beginning and the end of all other tariqah will be the beginning of your tariqah. At that moment, Prophet Sallallahu called all the souls of the Naqshbandis that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted them that level and that uh, blessings for Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq to see them. And he said he looked at them three times. According to the level of their, according to the Progress, progression, how they were progressing from one level to another level. And as he was looking, he was seeing them that they are receiving all these heavenly, divinely manifestation that coming to them from the highest perfect priv private realities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating and dressing them completely like they are becoming, they look like Abu Bakr and Siddiq. So any wali look at his murids, he can see in them say now Abu Bakr and Siddiq. They do not differ in their faces. They, they have been granted that and in the day of judgment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rahma, mercy that he will address the Naqshbandis they will come at the picture of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq. When, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq is, will be sent to paradise with no account because he is, the, he is one of the ten Sahaba that will enter paradise with no account, then all these Naqshbandis are on the picture of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. What, they ha what happened to them? They have an innocence from hellfire because they, their father is Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq has an innocence of hellfire. He's entering paradise with no account. All of them on their, on on his on his face, same reflection of his face, they go and enter paradise with him with no account. That is a grant that Allah granted to these Naqshbandis. And that manifestation is always in increase as they are increasing, as they are perfecting similarity like Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq. And he said, nine of nine big saints of other than Naqshbandi tariqats they requested in that presence of awliya Allah they requested a petition to prophet to make them followers of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq and they have been granted that to be in the day of judgment with their followers under Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq and that's one of them is Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. That he asked Prophet Sallallahu to be under Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq in that reality. And he was granted that. He Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq and his his uh, followers, the Naqshbandis, from time that Allah created Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq and was dressing him, created his essence and was dressing him from Prophet Sallallahu dresses, he was dressing his followers. Means we were there in that presence. Every Naqshbandi was there in that presence. Not only that, every Naqshbandi was present in the cave when they were migrating from Mecca to Medina Ghar al -Sawr. all Naqshbandis, even they attended one time, Grand Sheikh said, one time they attended Zikr, one time, 
for five minutes is enough for them to be present in that cave in the presence of Prophet and Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Sadiq. He said the murid of the Naqshbandi order is higher 40 times than any other murid of any other tariqah. This is a secret, a big secret, and all that has been granted to the followers of Sayyidina Abu Bakr because of the discipline and the belief of Sayyidina Abu Bakr towards Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was given the realities of the f f five maqams, Asr, Qalb, Asr, Sir, Sir, Akhfa, Khafa, was being dressed to Prophet and from Prophet to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and from Sayyidina Abu Bakr to all Naqshbandis. Finally, and we end with that, he said that a murid in the Naqshbandi tariqa, look how much Allah granted them. لو حمل عليه وطرح إليه جميع البلايا النازلة من السماء والخارج من الأرض لأمكنه من تحملها جميعا. إذا المريد in the in the beginning of his way in the tariq Naqshbandi tariqa, if he was thrown on him, dump on him, all afflictions coming from heavens and all afflictions going from earth, and all sins that people are doing, he is able to carry all that without any difficulty through his spiritual power, although you might not feel it in the physical realm, but you, the soul can feel that, knows that, and without any changes on his face, he can carry that, and he will present it to his sheikh and from his sheikh to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Abu Bakr to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how this tariqah is built from the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sadiq and to the Naqshbandi Sheikh. We end with this. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmat al-habib bi hurmat al-fatiha. This is the last of that series, Tahir. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Ameen. May Allah bless us. We will see what they will open next. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmat al-fatiha. This is the uh, barakah of our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani, and Grand Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah al-Faiz al-Dahustani, and Grand Grand Sheikh, Sayyidina Sheikh Sharaf al-Din al-Dahustani, that we got this information, this information. Or else, we never knew what, where we are standing. Now it's more, you have to have more belief now, you have to work harder now, because you saw how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us, chose the Naqshbandis to be, uh, to be dressed with this dress as a grant from Allah. He's not asking anything. You, you say this is a grant today, you don't need to pay it. And you say this is a loan, you have to pay it back, isn't it? So, uh, Wahban, is a grant. You don't need to pay anything. Kasban, you need to pay. Kasban means you have to work, to work, to work hard, to work, to make do, to make that, to make do. That's why other tariqahs they have so heavy things to do in the in the past. Now not these days. These days, very easy. No one is doing anything. But in the previous time, in the other tariqa, was oh, so much. In the Nakshban, the tariqa, they they get less than them and they reach higher, higher level. Why? Because of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq that he, he petitioned us to Prophet Sallallahu May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us and 
keep blessing us, although we are weak servants, we are not doing anything, but he, put, he made us from the Nakshbandis, we hope that we will keep our Nakshbandis, and we keep in, in that way, uh, not trying to uh, claim uh, that we are Khalifa, or we are Sheikh, or we are deputy, or we are representative, uh, whatever, whatever we are, uh, it is a blessing. Uh, they can call us what they like, awliya Allah, but for ourselves we have to know our limits. If Maulana say to you, you are uh, Khalifa or deputy, it's okay. He says to you, but you know, you have to know where he is telling you and you are so limited that that you are, uh, you know that you me cannot be anything without his blessings. We have to keep uh, humble, and we have to keep our level, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide us Amen. to the right way and to the right path. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmatul fatih. Allah. Don't think you came to waste your time for half an hour. Half an hour is more precious than from beginning of dunya to end of dunya because you are speaking for love of Prophet and love of Awliya Allah. Half an hour is like zakat from your side. You are paying charity due, you say. You are paying your dues, your charity. Your body has to pay its charity. Your soul has to pay its charity. Coming here or going anywhere, sitting and discussing Islamic issues and Sufi issues, spiritual issues, or Naqshbandi issues, it's a blessing and it's is a charity from our side. Allah likes that, Prophet likes that, Sayyidina Abu Bakr likes that, Awliya Allah, they like that, Sayyidina Ali likes that, all Sahaba, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Usman, Sayyidina Fatima Zahra, Sayyidina Khadija Al Kubra, Sayyidina Aisha, Umm Al Mu'minin, Sayyidina Al Hassan, Sayyidina Al Hussein, all of them, all the family of Prophet, they like that. May Allah keep us with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family. And uh, uh, protect us and open our eyes to see Prophet in dunya and akhirah. And to see Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sadiq in dunya and akhirah. And to be uh, resurrected with them. Ma'aladina an'am Allahu alayhim min al-nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhadai wa salihin wa hasuna udaika rafiqa bi hurmat al-hariyu hurmat al-fatih. Nerden? <gülüyor> <gülüyor>